Hello, I'm Michael Hashi, and uh, this is Drawing uh, Fundamentals. This is our first assignment, and I want to, uh, first of all, introduce you to the kind of materials we're going to be using in this assignment, and then talk about, um, talk about the, the reasons for the assignment. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's not going to be a, uh, uh, a traditional drawing exercise in, in, in rep replicating something in front of us, okay? Uh, somehow copying something in front of us as a realist drawing. We'll be doing that through the semester, but I want to think of this first exercise as a kind of sensitivity training, perceptual training, if not a kind of drawing aerobics. I mean, you, you, when you think about drawing, drawing, if it's reduced to its elements, if it's reduced to its absolute uh, minimum, it's marks on a paper, okay, whether abstract marks or mar mar marks that uh, describe a portrait or a still life or a landscape. Uh, they are marks left on a, on a surface, okay? So we're going to think about the kinds of qualities of marks. In other words, the kind of visual uh, attributes, qualities, and, 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 uh, and, and values that, that are in shapes, gestures, uh, human-made marks on a piece of paper. And the first assignment is really stepping back even farther from that, in that I'm asking you to, to find marks in the environment. Now, what the heck does that mean? Um, it means that we'll be using materials with which to do rubbings, okay? Uh, you all, you're all familiar with grave rubbings, uh, you know, old Yankee uh, colonial graveyards where people will come out with uh, newsprint paper and, and uh, crayons and, and do a replica, do a kind of rubbed uh, manual copy, photocopy of the, of the gravestone with its imagery and its, its, uh, its printing. Well, this is not going to be that kind of traditional rubbing. It's going to be a kind of more contemporary abstract rubbing in which you're going to look at your environment, look at the things that are around you, both, in, both inside and outside, and find those surfaces, find those textures, find those designs, find those things that are, that are physically raised and indented so that you are able to, with the tools I'll talk about, uh, do a do a kind of long-handed manual copy, photocopy, a kind of, uh, a kind of lifting of the qualities of uh, textures that are found around your environment. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is that it, it sort of forces you, one, to look, look at your environment, for starters. In other words, you're surrounded by vis visual things uh, completely. And, uh, and each of those things, each of those surfaces, each of those objects, has a kind of physical quality. And I'm asking us to use that kind of physical quality to repeat and to, uh, to in some ways, steal, appropriate, uh, a kind of pattern, a kind of texture, a kind of quality from the actual physical um, object or surface that you're, you're, you're looking at. And the materials, very quickly, the materials you'll be using, as you can see in this one here, uh, this person did use uh, just regular crayons. I wouldn't get too colorful with this. I'd stay with the the achromatic uh, blacks uh, of the of the cake. This puck that is a kind of a rubbing puck, okay, grave rubbing puck, and it's black. And you have that in your kit. All your materials should be in your kit. Uh, there's also in a pinch uh, your graphite uh, crayons, the 9B. This uh, they're designated uh, with a a number and a letter. The 9B is a very rich, dark, black, sometimes shiny material with which to pick up rubbing. So between, for the most part, the, the rubbing disc here, the puck, uh, the graphite crayon, and whatever you can find around the house that might be a kind of kitty crayon, don't get too intense, too colorful. Keep them to reasonably dark uh, and not too bright colors. Uh, because they want to somehow live with the rest of these, these, uh, these pieces of, of rubbings that you're going to be using to, to create a collage. So our first effort you know, would be to, to scour the environment for different sorts of qualities, but I'm showing you the product first so you have some inkling of what, what they're going to be used for. Here's this one that uses the colored crayons. Uh, the next one, uh, a little bit shop worn for time, but it is one that, that has used uh, newsprint paper, uh, rubbing paper, and charcoal, and, uh, and, and graphite. You'll just stay with the graphite and the 
the things I've talked about previously. But the student has taken pieces of the rubbed textures and created what is most of you know as a collage, a kind of paper uh, composition of, of, uh, of glued uh, contrasts. And that word contrast is really important. Um, if we're training our sensitivity to talk about uh, marks on a surface, you know, a kind of aerobics for drawing, which we'll get into almost immediately after this, uh, you're talking about things that differ, things that, uh, that uh, uh, have a kind of difference when they're brought up next to one another. This one here, from time gone by, uses the Conti crayon as well as the, as the uh, graphite uh, crayon. All right? But mostly, it's going to be the puck, the graphite, and whatever color crayons you have around the house. And you notice how you know, these things are cut out and put next to each other so that there is a contrast in terms of value. That's a, that's a, a fancy art word that means simply light and dark. It means that there are differences between organic and natural kinds of textures that look rough and, and landscape-like or, or rock-like. Uh, things that seem to be skin-like surfaces that might be uh, some sort of natural texture. And also, here, wood grains. You can see a wood grain there that's pretty obvious in that Conti, brown Conti crayon thing. Um, plus geometric things, plus things that seem to be uh, human-made and uh, regular and geometric and uh, mechanical. You know, so the idea that there are any number of contrasts, opposites, those are the things you're looking for in the qualities of your rubbings and things that are going to be woven together, sort of contrasted, put next to each other on the surface of, uh, of the paper. Here's one that, the yellowish paper here is a newsprint paper. You don't necessarily have to use that or have that, but nonetheless, there's a little bit of a contrast with that paper quality and the graphite pencil that they've used for the most part here. I mean, look at things around the house like a fan. Uh, the bumpy spiral of an electric range um, burner, okay? Uh, even natural forms like leaves can be used, right? Most of these things are what might be called visual fields. In other words, a fancy, fancy word for patterns and are ex an ex expanse of something. It's not so much uh, an individual shape. The leaf is an exception here, that's okay. But think about finding things that seem to be a continuity, things that seem to be a kind of continuous pattern, things that seem to be a kind of continuous texture. Because if you're building the collage from that raw material, you are, you're wanting to keep freedom of, of choice in terms of the, of the shape. In other words, yes, this suggests a, a circle here, but, but she has been fairly interesting and, and almost ripped in terms of the edge here, that this might have been, you know, the, the grid, but it also gets gets uh, bounded by things that are more organic. This a leaf that seems to be falling off, but at the same time, uh, is contrasted to the geometric thing that is that is beside it. All right. So um, both in your choice of materials to rub, and in your selections to put on the on the piece of paper piece of paper, one of the papers that are in your, your sketch pad, uh, which is somewhat smaller, a little bit smaller than this one here, uh, you are constructing things that are, that are giving us a, a kind of musical composition of different contrasts. So some tips about the actual physical rubbing of the material, the, the textures and the reliefs. Um, I would obviously hold the paper um, as still as possible, as as uh, as movingly as possible on the, on the surface that you're rubbing, and I would rub in a sing at first rub in a singular direction, fairly hard. The nice thing about this paper is that it's it's more like a, a combination of paper and thin cloth. It has a kind of give to it, a kind of softness to it. So if there's a deep crevice or a, a high projection on the the surface that you're rubbing, uh, it will be incorporated in the in the rubbing itself. And what you're really trying to do is come up with almost a photocopy or as best as possible a kind of uh, lifting of, of the actual surface underneath. So that means that I would 
try to do your, your rubbing in a way that doesn't bring attention to itself. In other words, rub, uh, do gestures, press down, you know, moderately hard, but in a way that, that makes an even value, an even pressure, an even gesture across the whole surface. Because what you don't, the one thing you want to avoid, the one thing you don't want to do is have the very gestures and movement that are capturing the, the texture be so strong that they become the drawing itself, that they become more powerful than the texture uh, below. So long story short, just make it, uh, it even. And I would cut your, uh, your rubbing paper in manageable sections. You, don't, you can do more than one on one piece of the paper, but I wouldn't use the whole, uh, I think it's 17 by 30 or so, or 20 by 30 uh, piece of paper. Uh, and, and cover it with rubbings. I would make it more manageable for yourself. You'd you'll be able to hold the, the paper up against the, the, the surface that you're rubbing if it was slightly more manageable and smaller. So don't get it too small, but, but you don't have to use a whole sheet, uh, an, an uncut sheet, uh, in your inventory of, uh, of rubbings. stop soon.
So at this point, what I'd like to do is to show you a few tips about putting this thing together. Now, if you've done something of an inventory, a number of pieces, I'd say at least one full piece of your, of your rubbing paper. You have two large pieces of rubbing paper. You can use as much as you want. Uh, I would get uh, an overkill of numbers of different uh, rubbings for you to use as raw materials to be applied to this. And while I'll show you how to use the rubber cement and cut it out in a minute, I, I just want to talk about a few things in your thinking about how this uh, can go together. You're, you're completely free in a sense. I mean, there's no dictation about what goes where. But the, the guiding force, the guiding kind of concept would be that you have significant contrast among and between the things that are going down. As I said before, the geometric versus the organic, the dark versus light, the uh, really crisp and defined versus maybe the stuff that is uh, out of focus and, and, and soft, okay? There'll be a list in your text of all things that you can consider in terms of those things that are, that are, that are possible contrasts. So I've not glued this down yet, and I, I think uh, th these things tend to work best. In other words, I've just the nice thing about collages is that is that you can test and play and redo and uh, and edit without gluing them. And as a matter of fact, with the rubber cement, even if you put something down within the first few minutes, if you're very careful, uh, you can lift it up and reposition it. But that's that's not advised. Um, you are putting these things down without glue at first and don't settle for your first design. I mean, it can be moved around, it can be adjusted, it can be played with. As long as your end product has the feel of something that is a map or a puzzle, a surface of puzzle pieces or a kind of fractured uh, surface in which all things lock together. Because if you're de dealing with contrasts of visual quality, you know, to get this against that, to have that border, to have this border here, to have this border against that, to have that border against that, that against that, that against that, you're, you're, you're allowing yourself uh, a visual richness and, and variety that, uh, you know, it's, it's related to drawing in the sense that you're composing, but it's related, most of all, just to your, your perceiving things. So as I said, this is a kind of aerobics. This is a kind of, uh, of uh, stretching and warm-up for the real drawings that are, that are coming all too soon. So uh, if you're doing this as if it, it's all locked together, or most of it's locked together on a surface, that doesn't mean you have to cut accurately and, and uh, perfectly each and every shape that they, so that they lock into one another. I've got lots of overlapping here. I've got lots of things that are simply juxtaposed and, and flapping over one another. But if you look at it, by and large, at this point, you know, you, you can make it, you can see that, that things will be on a kind of locked surface. And although it's a rule made to be broken, I wouldn't have too many, and maybe none, it's up to you, play with it. You play with it. You've got your own judgment. But I wouldn't have a lot of white spaces. The point of this is this against that, that against that, and not a white area that's a kind of blank separating them. Uh, you'll, you'll lose some of the, the power of one thing being contrasted against another if you have a lot of white in between these things. A little bit of stuff, uh, shards here and there might work well, but don't be overabundant with the white stuff. You don't want a lot of separate floating things in a big white space. And speaking of space, um, size of the, of the collage itself, this is one of your, uh, I think, 14 by, by 17 pieces out of your, your drawing pad. And when you rip it out of the drawing pad, it'll have one of these perforated edges to it. Uh, and it's very easy to sort of fold that down from the spiral pad itself and carefully rip it off so you have uh, pieces of paper that are clean along their edge. As far as the, the, the amount of work and the numbers of things you're going to do with this, um, I, would, I would say it's fair, given the time we have, that you do either two collages of this size, the 14 by 17, which is fairly small, okay, or you may put 
two of them together. You may lap them, okay, and glue them in back or tape them in back so that there's a larger expanse. They don't have to be double, but if you want to make this bigger, even in any direction, long or horizontally, you are welcome to glue together by lapping one margin, maybe a, a, a half an inch over the other, gluing it with the rubber cement and putting it together. So either, either two of these guys uh, or one big one that's using most of two of your, your, your papers. So you get the point that this could be moved around, you get the point that these things can be, um, can be overlapped, but still, given your cutting and your placement, look like they are snapped into a surface that's, that's fairly two-dimensional. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the rubber cement, and if those of you who haven't used rubber cement before uh, can be warned about, it's, uh, use it in a ventilated area, don't spend too long with it, it's not super toxic, but, uh, he said, uh, but it, it, it's not aromatically pleasing, and, it's, uh, and it's, it's a rubber cement that comes in your kit in this can with a kind of screw tap, uh, top applicator, Okay, it's a, it's a little gooey, all right? And I'd get a scrap piece of paper or uh, cardboard, as I've cut on the, this cardboard here, and apply the rubber cement so that it's moderately thick. You don't have to, it doesn't, do it more than just airbrushed. You've got a little bit of texture there, you can see the brush strokes, but you're not, you're not gooping it on, you are not uh, letting it flow into a kind of, uh, puddle, you are spreading it evenly, and I think one of the big things that sometimes uh, takes away from a really beautifully uh, designed piece is that you don't put the cement out to the edges of the pieces of the collage. If you can sort of work from the center out to the edges of the collage, you're ensured that you're, you're sort of guaranteed that, that stuff is not going to be lifting. In a, in a nicely finished collage. You can be fairly, you can be somewhat thin in the center, but make sure it's all over. And make sure the edges, as I've said, are well adhered. The nice thing about rubber cement is that, especially within the first few minutes, you could, if you decide that it's a complete disaster, you don't want it down there, you can lift it up with the edge of your um, X-Acto knife, which you also have in your kit. It's a very sharp, graphic, old-time graphic design knife. Uh, I'm using this particular piece of paper here. And for the sake of ease here, I'm going to take this off. And... Yes. Place it where you want it, and there could be obviously other pieces down already. That's, there's, no, there's no particular uh, sequence you have to use. I would use a scrap piece of paper, okay? Instead of, if you've worked all this, this wonderful magic in getting a rubbing that's defined and, and interesting and sort of organic or geometric, you don't want to destroy it by raking your hand through it, your fist through it. So if you put a piece of paper down first and then smooth it out and press it with that, a bigger one would work better, but you get the point. Uh, especially on the edges, you want to get it down there on the, on the paper. And that gives you a pretty strong adhesion. And if, this I've been pretty good on this one, but sometimes as you get going, the rubber cement will ooze out of the edges uh, even into another piece of, of uh, rubbed paper. Don't try to clean it up right away. If the rubber cement comes off uh, or out from the, the shape, let it dry and then uh, just take your, your finger or what's called a rubber cement pickup. You don't have to worry about that. Just uh, your finger or just a ball of dried rubber cement. Roll it over or with your finger pick up that particular strand of rubber cement and it will come off really cleanly and immaculately and won't mar the, the, the material you're, you're working on. So uh, th there's, there's no great uh, magic to this. You have your rubber, so you can use scissors if you want. Sometimes it's easier for people to use scissors. The rubber, the exacto uh, knife is, is there as a more precise graphic design knife. And for those of you who not used it, uh, 
you know, be very respectful of its danger. Um, this is a number 11 blade. It's sharp. It has a uh, plastic cap that you want to keep on it at all times uh, so you're not plunging your, your hand into your drawing kit and, and getting stabbed. Uh, best if you... Well, with this material, with this particular paper, I think you can pretty much cut through with one fell swoop. Okay? And you, it's up to you as to what shape you want to put, cut out. And because you've cut out one shape, there's no reason why you have to stay with that shape when you're constructing a collage. This is just the raw material from which you will make a, a shape that, that fits within your design. And it's not, you know, I, I, I don't mean to, to talk down to you or assume that you, you're not used to this kind of stuff, but I, I like to feel that, you know, you're coming from all different kinds of experiences, all different kinds of interests, and I, I'm taking nothing for granted, okay? So, uh, you know, just one particular quick um, cut through a permeable surface. If you don't have that, th those green cutting boards that are expensive and are in design uh, and art material uh, stores, just use an old scrap piece of cardboard for both the application of the glue and for the, and for the um, uh, cutting. Now I, I might want to, you know, eat into this. I've, I've, I would have gotten a general idea as I did in the beginning, but as I'm putting these things in, you can see how you know, contrast can can uh, can appear when you juxtapose things in in different uh, in, in different qualities. Here's one here. This was, I think, a laundry basket. We did in the last. We might have done it in the last video, but suppose we do it so that that some of the shape or or some of this this uh, this field of sh of form, not just white. Um, not just white emptiness, but you know, get an edge so that there can be some sort of contrast between one or the other. See how those things begin to work? And I'll, you can refer to your text, though, that along with this, uh, the link to this video will be a text that describes this uh, assignment to the nth degree. So if you can be, we'll talk about this more. Um, uh, 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 perhaps in a, a Zoom video, but uh, but also you are free, as as explained in the intro to the course, you are free to email me at any time and send me uh, camera pictures, the so phone phone camera pictures, uh, any time to to uh, to clarify how it's going. There's no, I can be, I might not answer you immediately, but you can any day um, check in with me to with any questions and. Uh, and any uh, in progress uh, guidance that you that you want. Okay, so it's one big one with these with two of these things put together, where a, a collage would be double this almost, or two of the smaller ones. So, good luck.